Assalamu uh, alaikum, everybody. So today I have a special guest. Her name is Maria. And uh, why is this special? Is because uh, Maria is uh, uh, a Muslim uh, who lives in the UK, but she grew up in Slovakia. And as you know, I come from Slovakia. I currently live here. So I think it's a really interesting guest to have on. And we're going to talk about her story and uh, how she got to where she's right now. So uh, thank you so much, Jazak Lakir, for being here, Maria, with us today. I'm really happy to be on your podcast. Um, I, I really like your YouTube channel. I think that you're doing amazing work. And I hope that this um, episode can bring some sort of benefit to um, your wider um, listeners, but more specifically Slovakians. Inshallah. Inshallah. So, yeah, that's a good segue to the first question. So, um, I've hinted already that you grew up in Slovakia. So, could you give us a little bit of background? Like, does that mean you have Slovak parents or, and how long have you lived here, um, you know, before you moved to the UK? Yeah, so I lived in Slovakia till I was about seven years old. So, um, my mom is Slovakian. Um, mm -hmm. So I lived with my grandparents in, in Slovakia for some time whilst my dad was working abroad. Um, and then obviously he moved to Slovakia with us as well. Um, my dad's from Pakistan. Um, Did you live in, in some big city or just curious? In, like... uh, no, it's uh, Ternava. So it's okay. uh, very close to Bratislava. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I lived there until I was about seven years old. I went to to nursery in Slovakia and year one and year two so I went to school there as well um, at the time uh, I didn't know what being a Muslim was obviously I was too young so at that age you don't really understand religion but I knew that I was different because of the things that for example I wasn't allowed to eat pork um, mm -hmm. so you know in in school when they would give the the school dinners the uh, when they were serving pork they wouldn't give me pork and they would just give me like a big plate of potatoes mm -hmm. and I would just be eating that um and then also you know in Slovakia I don't know if if they still teach this now but at the time they used to have like bible lessons yeah. um and uh I obviously didn't attend uh, attend those with the rest of the class so all of my classmates would go to that lesson and then I would stay alone and color in or something um so I knew I was different but I think that at that age, I didn't really understand why. At the age of seven, you moved to the UK. So how was the transition for you when you moved uh, to another country, which is not completely different, but it is different, of course. Uh, so I... Yeah, well, initially we didn't want to move, you know, me and my siblings, because our whole life was in Slovakia, all of our friends, our school. Mm -hmm. um, but my parents convinced us by saying that we'll be, we'll be living near Harry Potter. So... <laughs> We were really big Harry Potter fans and we knew that he was from yeah, the UK. Too. So my dad said that he will go to school with us. And obviously we were like, oh my God, okay, let's move to the UK then. Um, but we moved to a very multicultural city called Bradford. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. It's in the north of England. I would say it's uh, mostly occupied by Muslims from um, Pakistan, Bangladesh, um, mostly Pakistan. Um, so it was like... Um, it was not the UK that we were expecting as kids, like, you know, what we see in TV. Um, mm -hmm. When I went to school, um, on my first day, I saw for the first time in my life a girl wearing a hijab. And I was so confused. I didn't understand why she was covering her head. So I went home and that was like the first thing that I told my parents. I was like, there's a girl in my class and she wears like a, like a cloth mm -hmm. on her head. Does she have an illness? Why is she covering her hair? And then they were kind of like, no, it's normal. And then obviously when I started going out, I, I started to see it all around me. Like women were covered and... Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you, you it was it was nice to be a part of uh, a Muslim community for the first time in my life because even though I come from a Muslim family from my dad's side, I never met them before because we lived in Slovakia and they lived in Pakistan, and you know, in those times people wouldn't travel so easily. There was no WhatsApp or video calling or any of these things. It was just sending letters by post. So that was basically the first time I was exposed to Muslims in my life. Okay. So did you feel like you kind of belong uh, to the, because it was like a big Pakistani community or was it still like In the strange? beginning, I felt like, no, in the beginning, I felt like I didn't belong there either because to them, I was a Slovakian in Slovakia. To them, I was a Pakistani. So it was kind of like, I didn't belong in either place. 
until I obviously um, got older and I started high school and I, I started, you know, discovering my identity, my religion, my faith. Um, luckily, my uh, best friends um, were very practicing Muslims. Um, in my high school, I went to um, an all girls high school and it was like 98% Muslim girls. You know, almost everyone was wearing hijab. So at the time I started wearing the hijab, but not because it was Islamic, just because I felt mm. like, oh, everyone around me is wearing it. I'm kind of like the only one that isn't. But those were the first kind of steps towards me discovering Islam. Obviously, you have the atmosphere of practicing people around you and you see them praying. And that's kind of like something that kind of inspires you to look into why they're living this way. Do you remember a moment when you started to look deeper into Islam, when you tried to understand, like, why are people praying five times a day or like, who is Allah or all these things, like when you started kind of rediscovering uh, these basic things about Islam, because I, you know, I know many people are born in some religion, but then later on they start to reflect and kind of discover or leave their religion. So uh, just as I did. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, I feel like I always had a lot of questions as to why we do what we do. There was a lot of cultural practices that I found weren't Islamic. So every time I wanted to discuss it with the family member or someone around me, I felt like, okay, I can't just say, I don't feel like this is Islamic. I have to research and have a you know, proper debate with this person. So I've always loved reading. So I started reading the law. I started reading Islamic books. Um, but I think the moment that clicked for me in terms of Islam being the truth is when I started looking deeper into the proof of God, the, you know, everything around in the universe, how, how was it all created, the proof of the Quran, you know, the, the linguistic miracle of the Quran. Uh, Islam is a very rational religion. Um, it's not based on emotions, you know, um, it, it's uh, it it's in line with our natural instincts, I believe, and it's a way of life. So it, it has an answer to every single question and every single problem to mankind. If you look at society's problems, um, you know, theft, um, any problems in the society, there's a solution. Any problem in your personal life, such as marital problems, uh, there's a solution. If you look at the ec uh, economic system, there's a solution. Um, I would say that it just answered all my questions. How, how long did that process take you to kind of go and learn or study these uh, concepts? Was it like a few months or did it take you a couple of years to? Um, I wouldn't say a couple of years. I would say when I got into it, then I really got into it. So it was it was probably like a few months, uh, maybe six to seven months. Um, there was a transition. So when I was in college, in my first year of college, I didn't. I kind of stopped wearing the hijab properly so it was like on and off on and off sometimes i would wear it when there was like a special occasion i would take it off um and then i remember when the first year of college finished um by the way here in you start college when you're 16 so i was 16 at the time and then your um when I, I finished the first year i was 17 and then during that summer break we had we had like a two-month summer break here so i think that was one of the main time periods of my life where I did all of this research, all of this reading and di discussing with a lot of uh, martial and knowledgeable people. And um, after that summer break, I went back to my second year of college. I was 17, I think. And I remember I wore like an abaya, I wore a scarf and everyone was staring at me because it was such a, um, such a difference from the first year of how I was dressing and how I was acting. So Alhamdulillah, I think that was the period in my life where I really, um, started to practice what I was um, what I was learning. Maybe some people will say, "Well, you just kind of went for Islam because you had already part of your family there." Like, did you look at other systems of life, or like, did you ever were exposed to like some other religions or anything like that? Just when you were kind of researching like the universe or whatever like that, you know. Um, I did, uh, one of the subjects that I studied at college was actually religious studies. So that is when I was exposed to philosophy, yeah. um, you know, uh, people that believe in uh, the theory of evolution. And I just feel like none of, none of them really made sense to me, you know, such as the Big Bang Theory. Even in science, we believe that an action is a reaction to something. So how, you know, the, the bang was a reaction to something. 
So what, what came before the Big Bang Theory, if you believe that everything came into existence because of the Big Bang Theory? So I just feel like uh, they, they didn't give me the answers that I was looking for. I didn't deeply look into religions per se, such as Hinduism or Judaism, um, because I do believe that Judaism and Christianity are also from Allah. They would, the, you know, the, the new scriptures that they have were just distorted. But the original message is Tawheed, just as, it, as is the Quran. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really good. Because I think kind of like a revert, like myself, who has no Islamic background, kind of has to go through a similar process, but slightly maybe with some slight variations. But I think whether you're born Muslim or a revert, you have to come to conclusion on your own that Islam is the truth. Uh, you can't just rely on your culture or parents or whatever. Like uh, it has to be something you convince yeah. you, or you're convinced of based on whatever rational arguments, some experiences, all the mix of different things, you know. Uh, so yeah, so, exactly. So my parents, that that's exactly the point. My parents never told me that I have to pray. They never told me that I have to cover. Obviously, they encouraged me, but it was never something that I was told to do from the beginning uh, it was a decision that i made myself because of the studies that i did for myself yeah well i, I think it's really great that uh, you know when people are open or even non-muslims are open to learning about something new but uh, from my experience like looking at slovaks or even different europeans uh, they don't want to talk about death or they don't want to talk about these sort of things when you bring it up it kind of like uh, kills the mood, you know, and because you have to kind of think and change your perspective or maybe uh, rediscover your values and examine if you believe uh, something is correct. And it's not a pleasant process for a person to like go through that, that process. It's kind of like, uh, so people just stick to ignorance, at least from my experience, trying to do some bits, some small dawah, you know, to my family or something. Uh, some, some of it works, but some of it is just like, no, they, they, they don't want to even hear it, you know, because uh, it's just uncomfortable because they know that this might change how they live. And I don't know, like, I think people have something in them that blocks them sometimes. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, when um, I haven't actually ever given proper dao to my Slovakian family, they're not very big. I just have grandparents and mm -hmm. an uncle and an auntie. So my mom's family is quite small. They they are all still in Ternava. So I go to visit them maybe every every year, every two years. But I haven't openly tried to speak to them about Islam. Sometimes it's about the way I act and the actions that I do that I want them to see what kind of a person I am. Yeah. And they are practicing Christians, actually, they, uh, especially my grandparents. So it's the typical Slovakian home, you know, you walk in and there's like crosses everywhere yeah. and like pictures of Mary and Jesus. And my grandma, whenever I do, when the topic of religion ever, well, my grandma and my granddad both, whenever the topic of religion comes up they just say you know we're all the same we all believe in the same god there's no this religion or that religion it's you know uh, at the end of the day we all have the same beliefs so it's you can't really go further than that to discuss with them when they're not even disagreeing with you they're just saying that yeah we believe what you believe is the same thing <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's similar but uh, alhamdulillah i got the quran in slovak which is very like there's only one good uh, translation and uh, all three of my grandparents are reading it, so it's good that uh, you know at least they get some perspective. Yeah. And even though my like my grandfather said like I know Jesus is not God, like I already know this, but he still goes to church. <laughs> like he still doesn't want, like, you know. But uh, it's okay. I mean, we'll see. Uh, you know. But they are in the 80s, you know, like uh, pretty pretty old. So, uh, anyways, yeah, the same as my grandparents, really. Yeah. So what would you say is like the biggest um, difference? I know you've lived in Slovakia when you were young. Uh, so probably you just come here for like vacation or to see your family. But do you uh, do you have some sort of uh, comparison between living uh, as a Muslim, maybe in the UK versus in Slovakia? I know it might be. Oh, yeah, it's a completely different question. world. Uh, I would say that UK, well, not the whole UK, but certain parts of the UK are like living in an Islamic country. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, when I wore a hijab the last time I went to Slovakia and every, you know, in Bratislava, it's okay because it's the, the capital. And yeah. now more and more you see like halal restaurants and you see 
a bit of tourists, you see hijabi students and mm -hmm. um, it's not that bad there. But in Tarnava, I definitely everyone was staring at me like it was it was not even like, you know, someone looks and they look away. They would look at me I, like just walking and I, I just felt it felt like just staying at home the whole time, to be honest. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, in London, I live in London now, so um and bradford obviously where i i always go to visit my parents so wearing a hijab is nothing some people walk around in the full niqab and no yeah. one will even look at that person like obviously you do get the you know incidents of islamophobia but generally you can walk around dressed however you like and no one's going to say anything to you nearly every area almost every road has a masjid very big masjid mm. just yesterday i was sitting in the living room downstairs and opposite my house is a, our local masjid and i was just on my phone and i hear the adhan and i was like where is this coming from and my sister-in-law said oh the masjid plays the adhan loudly now and i was like wow really i didn't didn't even know so in the uk in london i'm sitting in my house and i'm here hearing the adhan from the you know our local mm. masjid um, there are so many madrasas and Islamic schools, Arabic schools. Uh, you have a huge access to Islamic education here. But saying that, I feel like now we live in a world of communication and you can be connected to the world. In Slovakia, you have the same access to this education. If you go online, like the whole world is, you know, on your laptop. If you want to learn something, you can just type it up, sign up to a course. Obviously, it's not the same because if you do a course in person, you have the atmosphere yeah. of the people around you, the teacher. And I think that's uh, that's a really big blessing in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. I just moved to Slovakia one day ago after five years living in Prague. So it's funny. Uh, I live in Banska Bystrica, which is like in the middle. Uh, if you yeah. know um uh, and uh i was I like think I, it's around the mountains right yeah in, in the mountains yeah it's quite big city like i think it's like third or fourth largest here but uh i was like curious just walking around like let me see if i can see some islamic stuff and i walk down first hall restaurant i come in salam alaikum alaikum salam they sell test peaks they have hagia sophia on the picture turkish guys wow. i go to the next one hall restaurant on the other street there there's a big, big Turkish restaurant, uh, but it's not kebab and stuff. It's like a big, nice, like fancy restaurant. Uh, oh, and yeah. I come, I ask the, I go to the chef and I say, Assalamu alaikum, do you guys have halal? And it's like, yeah, halal. I'm like, how is this possible? I studied here like 10 years ago. I studied here in the university, you know, and there was nothing. It was just, I wasn't a Muslim back then, but there, there wasn't this at all. And then we went uh, with my wife to like this shopping mall. And I see like five, uh, five sisters in hijab, like covered. I'm wow. like, wow, like that's crazy. Like uh, I haven't seen, and this is like, you know, in Slovakia we have this nationalism sometimes, or uh, these few guys who are kind of like racist. And this is like the epicenter of that. I would say like they come from this region, and it's fun. it's it's really strange to to see this. I'm like, uh, yeah, it's 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 good because I was like, I'm not gonna have halal for a while. I have to go to Bratislava or just some places to get the meat. It's like no, I can I can get it here, which That's I didn't know. Amazing, yeah. yeah. Even so, the last time I went to Tarnava, I think it was like two years ago. Even there, even I, I couldn't believe it that there was one um, like at the Donna restaurant, like Istanbul yeah. or something. And I was like, wow, all the I I was I wasn't so surprised um, at Bratislava having all these places, but Tarnava definitely. I I was like, should I even believe if this is halal? I don't know. Should I have it because it's so strange for me to see a halal. Yeah. Restaurant somewhere somewhere like this and i messaged them on facebook and i was like uh, is your meat halal and they were like yeah 100 percent sister so yeah i mean that that's really good to hear yeah there's more places like this you just kind of have to look but it's really all over i think i, I already found four restaurants in one day which are halal within like half a kilometer from me and so yeah it's just different difficult when it comes to friday juma you have to go to there's no mosque so you have to travel to other city but uh, it's possible, you know. <laughs> um, anyways, so I was just wondering, like, uh, if you have uh, any advice, because right now in Slovakia, or maybe even Czech Republic, you know, uh, we've created this platform, Tauhi.sk, where we try to show people how to pray or how to do wudu and stuff like that, because it's quite difficult when you convert to Islam here uh, to just know what to do, because you have no family background. There's no 
books are not in English. If they are in English, then not many people speak English. Like even the young people, they do speak English, but it's better if they're in our language. Uh, and there's many resources missing. There's no madrasa, nothing like that. Uh, and so I'm just curious if you have any sort of advice for Muslims who who convert to Islam, let's say, because there's more and more conver converting. I think it's like a few thousand converts now. Uh, and with, within like three years, this happened. Uh, like, uh, I don't know what's happening in the world, why people are, uh, you know, uh, looking at Islam, but uh, I converted it based off like English resources. I it didn't even know there's something in Slovak or Czech. But uh, for people who are maybe here living, do you have any advice uh, for, for them? Like, uh, you know, what should they do first or how should they go about their dean, you know, from scratch? Let's say they just did Shahada or they're they are about to do Shahada. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I would say that, um, you know, I made this point earlier as well. Um, and we just discussed this now. Um, Slovakia is no longer like, you know, sealed from the rest of the world. You don't live in a little village anymore with no access to anything in the rest of the world. Um, I feel like with with one click on the internet, you can connect yourself to the entire Ummah. So, you know, if, if there are no people around you, you can find friends on the internet. Um, you can find a, a lot of revert groups on Facebook, um, on Instagram. There's so many reverts that are creating um, all, all of this material to help you um, and oh, well one advice that I would give is make sure that you separate culture from religion sometimes you see a certain person and the practices that they are doing you think that's Islam so for an example like a Saudi person you know you will look at them and you'll see them in their white robe and their you know, red headdress, and you'll think that all oh, this is probably what men have to wear in Islam. So I'm going to start dressing like this. You need to be very careful about doing things like that because a lot of people fall into the traps uh, of thinking that certain cultural things of people's like Pakistani culture, Arab culture, Turkish culture is Islam, and that's sometimes off-putting when because some cultures do have. I would not extreme, but things that are not very practical to practice in your daily life, um, and they're not from Islam. Islam is an easy religion. Uh, you know, Allah's not asking you for much. I would say, um, so be careful of that one thing. Then I would say read uh, read as much as you can. Sign up to courses. Um, you know, communicate, uh, connect with people, communicate with them, ask any questions. There's so many. Um, people that are very well learned and educated they're open for you to ask any question that you have um, for example you've set up this platform I encourage people to use your platform you know to um, ask the questions that they have uh, you can refer them to people uh, watch your channel I guess um, I, I think that you have a lot of beneficial content there's so many youtubers that create content for reverts um, and also one of the main things that I would advise is travel, travel as much as you can, you know, the world is it, so easy to travel now compared to back in the days when you were stuck and, you know, you had to have like a lifetime savings to go on one trip, you can take a trip to Turkey, to Bosnia, to, you know, places that are close to you, Morocco, and I think that there is so much growth and discovery in traveling to Muslim lands and meeting uh, people, you know, Arab people, Turkish people, Pakistani people, reverts. There's just so much to learn from traveling itself. So I would definitely, you know, even do short courses, uh, courses in these places. Like you're able to go to Fez and do like a two week course there, go to Turkey, take some time out. Obviously, it's not practical to just take a year out to travel. But whenever you can, that would be one of my best advice one of my biggest advices yeah yeah i think my first trip to istanbul was like life-changing um uh, even i don't I, i've been there 10 years ago but this time as a muslim it was completely different for me and that's within the first year of reversion it's really important so you you realize like how big islam is and it's not like just online you know it, because you yeah. don't see it here uh, but it actually is like a civilization uh, you know and maybe I have like a deeper question. Uh, one of my last ones, maybe just like for people who don't get it, like uh, who don't understand why should they not why should they become a Muslim, but like what is the what is the biggest benefit of being a Muslim for you? Where do, what do you get out of it? You know, some people ask these questions, but uh, I'm not sure if you if you have a good response to this. But 
how would you maybe give an overview to someone like what's the biggest benefit of being a Muslim of you know following Islam for you personally? Well, to be honest, I don't um, I don't know what I, well to, to what I get from it. I mean, inshallah, Jannah. <laughs> um, but I'm convinced that you know Allah is the Lord, and I'm convinced that the Quran is the word of Allah. So really, I don't have like a deep answer to this. I feel like once you're convinced of, you know, what you've been seeking, once you're convinced that this is the way of life for you, then just follow Allah's commands and, you know, seek Jannah from him, you know, forgiveness for your sins. And really, it will bring you peace. Um, I, I can't say anything more than this because I feel like, you know, it's it's a way of life. This is how I live every day. I try my best, inshallah, to follow the commands that Allah has set for us. You know, um, when when I do something wrong, I have faith in the fact that he will forgive me because he's merciful. And I just know that this there is no other way of living. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I think the biggest kind of takeaway for me is like structure of life is completely different. Like. I just look at things completely differently and even on like uh, trends, like even in fashion anywhere, like I can see Islam everywhere as an answer like to anything that exists uh, because like the world is so lost in different areas, uh, politics, this, this, and it's just Islam is, it's, it's, it's so like the answer is right there. It's pretty simple and obvious to see like, okay, why, why are people still drinking alcohol? Like what? Like, uh, but uh I don't know like it's just so clear for me now to kind of see like uh, i don't know if you saw a movie matrix uh but like i feel like the guy in the matrix who took a blue uh, the red pill and now he sees like the world for what it is you know it's just that sort of like understanding uh for mm. me um and it's like beautiful you know to just have that and i know I, it's not gonna change probably because like there's nothing else <laughs> like there's no other competition no other way of life and yeah it's just uh it's just uh, beautiful you know so uh so yeah uh, maybe yeah. do you have any um in terms of your future are you move are you planning to move out of the uk to live in some muslim countries or what's your plan for the near future for you personally? yeah so i just lived in morocco for the past two years um i've just moved uh out of morocco um after spending two years there um, I lived in Casablanca, which is a very, very modern Moroccan city, yeah. very liberal. Uh, it's the most liberal Moroccan city. So I wasn't really in, in an Islamic atmosphere or anything like that. I feel like maybe I was one of the only people wearing hijab there. Um, so to be honest, I, I don't believe that right now in the world there is an Islamic society anywhere. There are Muslim countries and, you know, you have certain societies that are practicing more than others but the ideal islamic society i don't think that that or country i don't think that at the moment it exists mm -hmm. um i do think that it's it's been easier to practice my faith in the uk than it has been i've lived in spain as well obviously spain in madrid uh, I, I lived there for a year um Obviously, there's at the time there wasn't very uh, there wasn't a lot of Muslims around, um, so uh, that was I didn't really have an atmosphere there either. If people want to maybe connect with you or follow you or anything like that, do you have any platform or any way to contact you? Yeah, so you can leave my Instagram username in the description if you like, and uh, anyone that has any questions, feel free to message me. All right, perfect. Well, Jazakallah uh, Khair, Maria, for giving us your uh, perspective um, and guys if you have any questions uh, let, let us know in the comments below and uh, yeah thank you so much for uh, giving us your time and uh, all the best in everything you're doing thank you so much thank you for having me inshallah something uh, good comes out of this inshallah so yeah have a have a great rest of the day you too thank you